counselor, mayor, and now national leader in the United States Senate. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit how I know him as, as a person. So I've been blessed to know and work closely with Senator Booker for many years because we're both part of a dedicated community of social entrepreneurs and change agents. And I can tell you when we all first got together, Senator Booker stood out right away. And not because he's just so tall and strapping and handsome, <laughs> but because of his passion and his intellect and, he, and his incredibly strong justice nerve. When Senator Booker sees an injustice, he doesn't just think about it, he moves to action. And I know that with every vote you cast, with every piece of legislation you introduce, with every effort you make to reach across the aisle, and every time you stand on principle, which you always do, it's first and foremost the people of Brick Towers in Newark, New Jersey, who he lived with for eight years in a public housing development. It's the people across New Jersey who are the very fabric of our country, the people who aren't on the headlines, aren't on the front pages, but who do the work every day that make America such a special place. And it's the people all across our country who don't have a voice in the United States Senate. And so we're all so blessed that you've been such a champion of Opportunity Nation and the work we do, and the leadership that you provide, and the hope that you provide. So please join me in welcoming my dear friend, a champion for all of us, Senator Cory Booker. I just want to thank everybody here. First of all, Alan was overly generous. He's been inspiring me in every step of my professional life since we've connected, and I'm grateful for him and the leadership of this organization. I would be remiss if you know me at all. In my Senate office, uh, over my chair, every single day sits a map of the Central Ward of Newark. Uh, it is in my heart. Uh, it's where I still live. I go home. In fact, there's 100 senators. I go home to a community that is rich with spirit, uh, wealthy in, in, in heart and conviction. Uh, even though we are the median income is about $14,000 per individual, some of the most heroic Americans I've ever met in my life uh, live and reside uh, in, in that section of Newark, New Jersey. And there's a woman here who is a legend in our community. I just want to give my love to Miss Wallace, uh, who I see here. Oh my God. It's, uh, awesome. husband, God rest her, uh, his soul, uh, have been standing in the breach for uh, a, a, my, more than my lifetime, yeah. literally standing in the breach uh, for a nation uh, that sometimes confuses what uh, makes us great. Uh, what makes our nation great is not the size of our buildings, the size of our government, uh, it's not the wealth of our wealthiest. What makes our nation great is how we provide pathways for every single child. And while some people want to talk about exploiting natural resources, uh, oil, gas, coal, uh, even sunlight, the reality is the greatest natural resource this country has, especially now in a global knowledge-based economy, is the genius of our children. And we are, we are not doing well. Uh, we are, uh, have, have, uh, have to have some sense of shame, in fact, uh, that 20% of our children are born in poverty, and that unfortunately, uh, other nations who have social mobility indices, it's a measurable indice, the ability for someone born in poverty to get out of poverty. America is losing its ground in comparison to our competitive, um, uh, our competitor countries. And, and that's not just something about uh, uh, the, the generosity of spirit of doing things for our young people. That is actually a, a critical aspect of economic competitiveness in the long term. And so uh, Ms. Wallace and I know how brilliant the young people in our community are, how extraordinarily creative, how if you, in fact, one of the best returns on energy, effort, resources, and love uh, uh, is, is that you're gonna get is giving it to uh, uh, kids like the ones in our, in our community. And so that's my fight. That's why I keep the Central Ward of Newark over my, over my head uh, when I sit in, in this office. That's why I will never forget uh, where I came from and the people that put me in the political game in the first place elected me to my first office. I want to just wrap this up by saying I, I'm proud uh, that, that this is not a partisan game for me. You guys heard from the truly the best big bald black uh, senator already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, truly the best of, of all the many of us that are in the Senate um, uh, already from Tim Scott. Different side of the aisle, uh, uh, different political uh, uh, beliefs in many ways, but he and I have found common ground within our conviction uh, for young folks, and he's a guy uh, that uh, you know uh, saw a tougher pathway, an unconventional pathway to where he is. And it's his testimony that if somebody's given a shot, you're given a shot, 
uh, you're going to thrive. My father born poor. In fact, he would lecture me. Don't tell those folks, Opportunity Nation, I was born poor. Tell them the truth. I was just Poe, P-O. <laughs> <laughs> My father was born poor, segregated environment, single mom. All, again, all the data against him, but because people intervened in his life when his mama couldn't take care of him, uh, just gave him a little bit of love, a little bit of support, uh, uh, a little bit of a hand uh, up. Uh, he was able to thrive in this country. Um, uh, and that's what's really needed right now. And I'm sorry, but our juvenile justice system is a, is a, is a uh, dark area of shame in this country, what we do to our children, yes. some of which other countries call torture, exactly. things like solitary confinement. It's a shame. Our foster care system, which has many actors in it that are noble and, and kind and generous, but it needs a lot more support and a lot more uh, change and transformation. Um, our prenatal work in this country is abysmal, what we do for, uh, uh, for children uh, uh, before they're born and preparing pathways uh, for their health and success. The environmental realities our kids grow up, Ms. Wallace knows this. We live in a toxic uh, city where they wouldn't even let me, when I was doing urban farming, plant in the ground because of the lead content. We had to do it in boxes where our river is an Agent Orange site where the air and the toxins that we breathe, the number one reason why kids are missing uh, school in America is asthma. All of these reasons uh, are, are, are just demonstrate that we're not doing what we should be doing with a conviction to empowering young people. But yet here's organizations like this that understand that even with uh, uh, all of these challenges, there are key, Archimedes said, give me the right lever, I can move the world. That we can find those Archimedes points for this incredible talent in a country that's hurting. Talk to manufacturers in America, and they're so frustrated. When I brought all the manufacturers in Newark together, I thought they'd complain to me about Obamacare or taxes. The first thing they said is, we can't find machinists. We can't find you know, skilled manufacturers. We can't find, I sat with a group telling me yesterday that just the, the truck engine repair, and these are folks that are making 70, 80, $90,000 a year. And so we now know that if we get young people the right kind of tools that they need to get the skills for the 21st century economy, uh, they will thrive, and there's ways to create those linkages and those Archimedes points. But this is what's missing, and I, and I say this with my staff freaking out here um, that, I, that I, I am so late for this next meeting, but I just want to say that this is the one thing that's missing right now. Um, and, and the problem, I'll bring it to this, is poverty, and I'm not talking about in a material sense. Not that kind of poverty. What we have right now is a poverty of compassion, a poverty of empathy, um, and a poverty of passion about these issues. Um, and, and that's why I get so excited about the group I'm standing uh, before right now, is because we all have to take our own responsibility. We will be the ignition points that lights this world on fire about focusing on our young people. If we focus on our young people, uh, um, then we will ensure that this nation in the generations ahead uh, will be just as great as it has been in generations in the past. I thank you. You have my love and my support. Appreciate it.